Hey everybody, welcome to another Friday vlog or vlog. I'm not sure which one to call it still, but uh, the main thing I want to talk about this week is the fact that I got my microphone working properly. I turned down the Windows volume to 3. I used to have it at 15, and I turned up the volume on my microphone. There was actually a volume dial, a gain dial, and I turned it up considerably, and it turns out that Windows was amplifying that whining EMI noise and some other background noises in some ways that the microphone itself would not. So, I guess that's my general advice for all microphone users, but specifically, uh, Yeti, Blue Yeti microphone users, is turn up the volume on your microphone and turn down the volume on Windows itself because the software is kind of uh, doing things kind of after the fact and doesn't know how to uh, increase the volume as cleanly as the microphone itself. It actually makes common, pretty, pretty much common sense, or good practical sense. Uh, so, uh, yeah, after owning my microphone for over a year, I finally had to learn how to use it properly. That's... go, go me. Way to go, you're so smart. Okay, anyways, but at least I'm telling other people about it so that you can, you know, maybe learn from my mistake, laugh at it. I, I can still laugh at myself. So, what else is happening this week is that... I think I'm actually going to call it vlog. Yes, because I imagine... <laughs> we're going back to that subject suddenly. Uh, I imagine Graham Chapman in a particular skit saying that vlog sounds like a good wordy, woody sort of word. Vlog, yes. And, uh, and then he would shoot a caribou and say, erogenous zone. But he would say then that vlog sounds, oh, it sounds very tinny. Vlog. No, it's tinny, tinny, tinny vlog. Tinny, tinny, tin. No good old salt, is what he would say to his wife, while his daughter would be offended by the word tin and would cry and go running from the room. And if you don't know the skit I'm talking about or referencing here, I don't know the name of it either, but it's a Monty Python skit, and if you just look up erogenous zone in the uh, Google, or <laughs> caribou nippling at the croquet hoops in the Google search bar, I'm sure that you'll end up in the right place, and Monty Python. Uh, but anyways, happy Father's Day. I want to get that out there. Be good to all fathers and grandfathers, and all of their ilk. <laughs> I, uh... I really mean that, uh, and hello, and, or hello, thank you, thank you, Dad, obviously, uh, happy Father's Day, and I will, of course, uh, say that to him directly, of course, as well, and the other thing that's happening, so that's basically that out of the way, I, I, you know, you don't really need to go too far out of your way if you're good, but generally be good to everyone, I mean, that's an important one, be good to everyone, and if you're good to everyone all year round. I mean, do we really need to go out of our way to be good to someone on a particular day? If you're really, if you're really good about just being good to everyone, I mean, I guess everyone wants to feel special, but particularly if you're someone who forgets to be good to people, you forget people from time to time. It's good to be remembered. So, I guess, definitely remember people if you're forgetting them, and in this case, fathers. But, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just kind of thinking about things, but... Uh, what else is happening on Father's Day, June the 19th, that's really exciting me, is Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, episode 6, I believe it is, because the first five were just amazing. They blew my mind, they were some of the highest quality videos I have seen on the internet in terms of just artwork, and puppetry, and sound, and lighting, and, and jokes, and it's just got everything, and tons of hidden Easter eggs, and people have gone wild for these videos. It is, they are the pinnacle of quality versus quantity. I seem to be la landing more on the quantity side of the slider where they only have these six videos, but man, it's like, they are like some of the most thoughtful videos. They are full of enigmatic puzzles. And I feel like they've kind of spawned an entire genre of videos that are like enigmas that people solve as a community. There's like, hey, I found this thing out. Oh, hey, I found this thing out. And we work together and we kind of map out the puzzle as a whole. I should say that actually, I don't know that a video is actually coming out on the 19th. They are that enigmatic. I don't, I don't actually have official 
confirmation. It's actually all the community. And I have been burned on community theories before with a certain Hodor origin. The origin of the name Hodor. Hodor. Man, that was a cool episode. I don't want to spoil it. But minor spoiler alert. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing, but... It involved time travel, and it just raised a lot of questions. It was very intellectually stimulating, and it made me think... I don't... I haven't read the theories on this one, but that time travel works in that world like it's kind of, uh... kind of expected to happen, like it's fate. Like, uh... what you've already... it's already been pre-calculated that you have traveled back in time. It, 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 it raises the question... What happened the first time, you know, before someone traveled? How, how did these series of events happen before anyone traveled back in time in the first place? But in any case, now this loop is set up where time travel is involved. And uh, the people that reacted to the time travel reacted to it in the way they did to create the situation that created the time travel in the first place. And so now it's just a uh, unending loop, uh, I guess, is the way to explain it. So that's the time time occurred in a way that it expected the time travel to happen essentially but it, 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 if time travel always raises a lot of questions i'm talking about things in a very general way so that people who have seen the episode will know what i mean but people who haven't seen the episode still won't get it spoiled but i just thought that wow that's in a nutshell i thought that that hodor the the reveal of the origin of, of hodor was it was pretty uh, surprising, and I'll give you another hint. It was not the name of a horse. That's what I got burned on. I said, it, you know, I thought it could have been a name of a horse, and as far as I know, it really seems like there's going to be an episode of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared on, the, on Father's Day, the 19th, but I don't know for sure. There's just a lot of references to the 19th throughout the series, and I believe it. But I believe that Hodor's name was a horse. The name of a horse. I thought Hodor is a horse. He was not a horse. He was not a horse. Anyways! So, I think that covers everything. Oh, I did have a lot of technical difficulties this week. But I soldiered through it. It was one of those weeks where everything that can go wrong does. My editing software messed with me. YouTube messed with me. I had a weird thumbnail error and a weird uh, corruption of a video. So I had to repost two videos and uh, my computer. And there was just, you know, when you have one of those weeks where everything goes wrong that can. And it was compressed within three days of <laughs> unfortunate events. And I learned something about myself that I have like this reservoir of frustration and anger. And it kind of fills up. And after a certain point, it starts to overflow, and I kind of start sputtering bits of rage. And if it fills up too much, the pressure gets too great. If you keep pouring it in, there's so much pressure built up that eventually you'll, you can lead to a bit of an explosion. So what I need to do, and I've learned to do, uh, I, you know, I dealt with it pretty well. But I'm learning about myself. I was, I was definitely having some symptoms of massive frustration, but continuing to work, because I really wanted to get my work done when I should have taken some time to have some fun and relax. You need to take some time, if, or this is what I do that helps me. I don't know about you guys, but I acknowledge the anger, which is basically what people do when they say, count to 10, relax, and I try to release. I try to let go. You try to release as much of that reservoir of anger. I try to open up more valves and release as much of it as I can. But I the, the most important thing when it's happening is to take a step back and cut off the flow inward. The inflow, because sometimes it can be a torrent of rage fuel just jamming down into your anger reservoir. <laughs> I'm getting very metaphor... I'm getting entrenched in metaphor here, but I think, I think you guys are following me here. Uh, so I'm going to soldier on. That if I just try to release... If I cut off the flow, take a step back... And then try to release as much as I can. Try to open up all those valves and just let go. Then I can continue working. But if I don't take that moment to do those things, it can get kind of ugly. <laughs> and I can get, I can start to, you know, and, and, and the thing is, it's like, I have a tendency to be one of those people that just kind of takes it in and forgets to do that. And I can do that for quite a while. It's like, and it's like one, a, a bad thing will happen. And it's like, okay, or okay. 
you know, another bad thing happens. Oh, you know, it's like it gets worse, and then you start to get the eyeball torch. Okay, you know, another bad thing happens, and then another bad thing. Happens. Okay, no more bad things happening now. <laughs> and uh, and then you um you cause a volcano to explode with your rage fuel, or something. I don't know where I'm going with this, but you guys get the idea. You, when when too many things happen in a row, and you don't release. You're you're gonna end up releasing anyways. It, s- serenity now, s- insanity later. I guess in a general sense, one wise man once said. So, anyways, uh, I, that's all I have to say. Thank you for tuning in this week for the weekly vlog. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you next week. Good night.